Have yourself a wonderful day, Cookie. And yes, Timber is back. Yes, yes, he is. All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the stream. I am Raw Zim, and this is Ascent to Ascend Dungeons and Dragons. I will turn it over now to. Well, who did recap last week? It was kind of a group effort. Oh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it kind of was. Well, since Timber's back now, I would say just uh, have him do it. Except he isn't part of the game. Oh, wait, you've been watching the, re the recordings, haven't you, Timber? Yes, I have. All right, get that re <laughs> recap going. Let's see how right. well you did. So, let's see how let's have, see how good I will mumble. All right. Previous episode, the group found themselves in a tavern, and in this tavern there was a bard. The bard started singing a song, claiming to be the happiest man on this plane. But there was no battle, so I did not know. The song was so... For some so reason, you are joyful. breaking out a bit, Timber. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, your audio's uh, kind of faded in and out. You know, let's see. Uh, how's that? Battle? About the same so far. Won't know until you start okay. talking again. Yeah. Uh, oh. Uh, and in the tavern, he was singing a song, and then apparently everyone wanted him to stop because they started pelting him with gold. The Moulton's projectile something about an egg and welted him really good. Then after that, they became friends. Then after that, they, uh, they got back on the boat and something about the chicken zone? I'm not sure how it works. Apparently they got a doll that you can get chickens for them. And then that bald was doing something shady with some heretical people. Something about Time Lords and Thievoy. He got a lockpick, which doesn't look anything like my boot. Not sure how that works. And I think the party also met this really small human puppy thing and he gave him magical cannons or magic cannons not sure and now the party desires to go after a ghost ship of some sort without nobody who knows how to you know sail a ship so i'm pretty sure that's a great plan and that's all I remember. Okay. Uh, anybody else have anything to add? No, I think no, that, that kind of sounds pretty it. good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Do you, when you last... have anything to add? Uh, no, no. It's all what you guys remember. Um, so when we last ended, we had the group, um, there's only four of you here? What are we missing? We are missing Moriarty. We have no idea where he is. Uh, I think that's it. He's still thrown down the well. Oh, yeah, he is in the well. <laughs> uh, you didn't get with Odd Socks to make his character, so he's sitting out today. Wearinimal's not uh, attending for a while. So, yeah, just us. Okay. Um. So when we last ended, uh, you guys were... Preparing to head out, um, 
You learned about some underground shady stuff that some of the churches run. Um, so I guess it comes down to what is it that you guys want to do now? One of the things is going to be asked around about the city that the librarian came from. Why that was so empty. Okay. Who you asking? The people around the docks, they'd probably know. Um, okay. Hold on, let me pull something up. I have so many things that I need to open, and then I realize that I don't have it open. Okay, where are you? Okay, um, a lot of them are kind of, kind of look at you and kind of shrug, like they're, uh, they're not honestly sure, but, uh, one of the older people, uh, just kind of turns and goes, oh, well, now we, we know it best as the abandoned villa, but, uh, back in the day it was, a." Uh, thriving hub honestly I uh, I was so young when it was originally abandoned I don't remember much about it all I know is there was some sort of creature that prowled at night whether it's still there or not I don't know but it would take people one by one No one saw it. No one knew what it was. And there was the... person that was over there. There was a person over there? It was a relatively fresh corpse, yes. You know, I don't know. I haven't been there in, oh, a couple decades. Red Panda. I can't say I know any Red Pandas. If you know anybody who's uh, into poking the other side of the veil, I did keep the skull. Might be able to ask him a few questions. Oh, no one's into dark voodoo, heebie magic like that. Not around these parts. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah. Now be sure to stay away from there, because... It's dangerous. Will do. Who do heebie-jeebie? Yes, because that's what Rose does. Voodoo heebie-jeebie. <laughs> I am offended. What I do is a perfectly valid art that takes years of study and practice and fulfills a vital niche in the community. Even though this community doesn't have it. Well, it, it it still has the niche. It's just, you know, the, the church is filling. All right. Um, as you're all kind of 
wandering the town, kind of asking around. Um, there is a commotion where uh, particularly wolf-like guy is uh, standing around and everybody is kind of looking at him a bit menacingly. Uh, this would be what you will come to know as Timber. My lynch senses are tingling. I'm sorry, you're not a lich yet. I said lynch, not lich. <laughs> Those people look like they're about to hang him. You know, if they can find a tree strong enough. Actually, that might be a good idea to let them go ahead and do so. He looks kind of scary. You look kind of scary. No, we don't. We're absolutely adorable. Matter of opinion. One in the crowd kind of throws a rock towards him. Go back where you came from, you woven scum. You can try to beat my armor class. <laughs> I'm not going to bother rolling. They're weak. <laughs> Tong. Thimble gonna... will... Oh. Will snarl at them. They kind of flinch a little bit, but... Specifically the one that threw the rock at them. Yeah, they kind of flinch a little bit, but they have... Solidarity in numbers. Gonna kind of mosey on into the crowd and go, so uh, what, what's going on here? What'd you do? What's up? The woven scum. A magnanimous dispensation. <laughs> Easy. He takes out of the compliment. <laughs> Thank you very much, Toshime, for the donation. <laughs> the donation goal has been uh, completed. Okay. Okay, so he's a wolven. Amazing. Congratulations. But what did he do? It's not what he did. It's what his people did. So in other words, he did absolutely nothing. Well, well, uh, uh, and just kind of stammers a little bit. It's the principle of the thing. I what mean, did his people do? She collects bodies, and yet uh, the rest of us are fine. They um, uh, kind of turn and look at Rose in, like, pure horror. Axel, remind me to keelhaul you later. Wait, why are, you, be this... why are you gonna do anything against me? It was Pixel that did that. I'll keelhaul both of you. I'll tie, to, I'll tie your tails together like fuzzy maracas. What? what I thought that was okay. This maraca thing you speak of. Holy crap, it can talk. Uh, it, it, it's a kind of musical instrument. So, what did the wolven do here? They know what they did. So, in don't. other words, they didn't do anything. That's not what I said. Okay, then what did they do? See, you said that they know what they did, but they're not the ones asking. We are, and we don't know. We therefore need it explained to us. This is how communication works. They, they came and pillaged... They actually burned our church to the ground. We had to build a new one. Killed most of the men. And how long ago was this? I would say... About a decade ago. 
So, in other words, it's highly unlikely that he personally had anything to do with that. If he's here, there's sure to be more to follow. So, let me get this straight. This force that you couldn't defend yourself against before, that had shown up with violent intent, now shows up just kind of loitering around, not aggressively. So, your reaction is to antagonize it, which could only lead to escalated conflict against the thing that you couldn't defend yourself against last time. Amazing strategy. Wrong. You should now. lead an army. Uh, Dungeon Master? Yeah. Timbo will lean down, and at this point, you realize this guy is very tall. He he's stands gonna... up at about nine feet, so he's probably leaning over quite a bit. And he goes to the guy who who uh, threw the rock at him, and he just goes, I believe this is the point where you run in terror. He uh, takes a couple steps back. And roll your intimidation. I was hoping you'd say it. It's under. Do I just click on it? Uh, <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. Uh, click intimidation. Okay, so uh, on your skill sheet, there is, or on the skills tab. There's a little box that's yes. under the total cata, uh, the total column. You click and drag from that yes. box and drop it into the chat. Okay. Ooh, good roll. That was a good roll. So this guy, he... That oh, was I found medicine. it. Uh, I was <laughs> just rolling that as an example. Oh, oh, I mis misread. Oh, well, still a good roll. <laughs> yeah, Timber got a good roll, but I was just rolling as an example. Um, you you healed his feelings better than I hold him. <laughs> <laughs> um, this guy, who's being the most antagonizing of the crowd, uh, kind of steps back and kind of pushes himself behind a couple people, one of whom you is probably a nun. So he's probably hiding behind a nun. Um, and they all genuinely have fear in their eyes. But they're still standing their ground. And one of them from the crowd shouts, What are you doing here? Hey, look at that! Somebody's brain cells actually rub together. I... I am Timbo da Jägermeister von Glorious Balkenborg Wolfenstein. I am here. And he will point at the towel in the distance. For that. What are you? Do not get in the way of the Inquisition. Otherwise, you will suffer it. And the word Inquisition riles up the crowd a little bit as they all kind of, none of them really have weapons. And since it's daylight, none of them have torches either. So this is an angry mob without the typical angry mob gear. But they all kind of get on the defensive. Um, gonna shout as best I can. And what do you need it for? The Empress has ordered her woven to take one of them, no matter the cost. I am on a mission, one of many. I am passing through. Do you intend us and our village harm? Only if you get in my way. The goddess BV will stop you and your so-called empress. 
like she did last time, and he will cackle. Oh, so much for me trying to defend him. So it's, it's true. All carnivores are like that. I wasn't wrong. <laughs> so what's the, the crew's other than Rose's response to a uh, timber here. Yeah, Rose is just acting in total, uh, not consternation, what the condemnation of the crowd? Contempt, total contempt of the crowd. Just like fucking stupid villagers, they're going to get themselves killed. Well, it's time to see the fireworks. Oh, you want fireworks? Oh, no. And Pixel and Paxel are going to start shooting uh, fire energy beams out of their mouths into the air. Uh, this, in response, the entire crowd basically just ducks down. Temple stands, though. I, I kind of assume that uh, uh, they would probably be riding on Rose's and Gar's shoulders. I'm gonna flick my flip my sickle to the blunt side and just smack Pixel in the head with it. I, I guess Temple will look up to see what why the sky is exploding. Blinded by the light, ripped up like a deuce. Another rumor in the night. Uh, how far away are we from uh, Timber? Uh, you're all part of the crowd, so not too far. Close enough to jump to him? Uh, if you were a flying squirrel, maybe. You clearly do not... I don't know, Maltons can jump. Yeah, you've clearly <laughs> never seen them jump. Yes, but flying squirrels can also glide. Well, you said not too far, so I'm asking exact distance. <laughs> Joke. Um, I could throw you over. I uh, throwing would work. Oh my goodness! Martin does not wish to surrender the, the candy. Yeah, that Martin's not sharing. <laughs> Actually, huh? How much did the Martins weigh? Uh, unestablished. Mm. Well, if it's less than 10 pounds, I just realized that I could use Mage Hand to carry them. It is not less than 10 pounds. <laughs> Aww. I mean, their, their gear alone is more than that. Fair enough. I guess you'll just have to mage hand timber instead. I, I'm all that all that would do is just give him head pats. <laughs> well, Pixel and Paxel are gonna jump from one villager to the next, uh, riding on their backs and heads, and then uh, move. You know, jump to timber. Uh, timber, how do you respond to a? Temple is covered in chainmail, so he is very easy to. Basically, a giant scratching post. <laughs> and uh, Temple is too focused on the crowd right now, so uh, he probably doesn't notice these uh, these mountains climbing up on him. At least not until they perch on his shoulder and stick both of their heads in to uh, look through the visor on the helmet. This kind of startles Temple a little bit because he was not expecting that. Ha! We have startled Timber! Ha ha! <laughs> uh, he will, like, do the wet dog shake thing. What? What? what uh? And I'm Paxel. Hmm. 
What what are you, little one? What are you? <laughs> oh, we are Martins. Timbo has no idea what a moment is. <laughs> you look like a friend. Or at least you could use a friend. I am many things, but I have never been called that. Well, then I guess we'll have to fix that. Come on, friend. We're going to that tower, too. Do you have a boat? Yes, we have a boat. It needs some work, but we have one. Do you have anyone who knows how to sail a boat? Debatable. It, if you just point it the direction you want to go, get, wait for some wind and go. Hey, hey. A, B conversation. See your way out. <laughs> it, it's kind I'll of have you know. When he, when, he t when he talks, the entire ground vibrates. I'll, I'll have you know, little one. I am part of the Imperial Navy. Or Marine Corps, you could say. I know how to use a water fortress. Well, great. You can be our captain. Uh, uh, let's, let's start with helmsmen. Um, hey, they are talking telepathically to Timber. <laughs> oh. So, okay. I don't, you didn't specify that, that it was just for him. You, you can probably hear Timber, because he's loud. Yeah, yeah, you can hear Timber. Yeah, but I but he hasn't he... said nothing yet, so. I didn't hear you specify that it was just to him, that it was an open broadcast. Fair enough. Or are you but with you... others, little one? Ah, uh, we're with those two. What's up? <laughs> I Hi. Fuck. No, again, yeah, yeah, I can't hear you, I know. Just <laughs> reflexes. <laughs> Sorry, the smarm is on <laughs> autopilot, okay? <laughs> uh, Temple will look at uh, what he assumes is Tanya and... Well, Rosalia, oh, I mean, Rosalia and, and Gaul. Yeah. One's a knoll, the other is a rabbit. We're with the angry rabbit uh, and the super fast. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll describe Temple. Uh, he's nine feet tall. He is a large creature. This is the big surprise. He is covered in black chains with a red tablet. A very large crest imprinted on his uh, chest, his cape, and his shield. Someone in the crowd. yeah, he probably makes a lot of rattling noises when he walks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, someone in the crowd, uh, this is a kind of more petite woman, finally speaks up, and she's kind of stuttering a little bit. And she goes, w Wolven are, are usually in large groups. Are, are you here alone? Wolven are never alone. The Empress watches over. That would be a yes, by the way. Why, why are you on our island? Are you... Are you going to hurt any of us? I am the last crusader of... Or oh, last crusade. My pack has been defeated. But I still stand. He's alone. I am Get him. Caught. 
<laughs> that would. End I am poorly. to report of my failure and probably get set to death. However, I still have one thing I must do. I must take that tower, or a tower. I'm not quite sure. Something about a town. Will you, will you leave our island? We won't give you any trouble if you agree to go. Then yes, no blood shall be spilled for my blade, so long as you let me. She kind of looks back at the group and some of them look like they're uh, in agreement. Others are kind of grumbling to themselves. Um, but the general consensus is they kind of part ways to make a little path for you. So you can kind of walk past them. Pixel. Sorry, guys, you're Show not going to be able to... your Wattle Fortress. It is Sorry, that guys. way. Go ahead. Sorry, guys, you're not going to be able to commit suicide by Paladin today. <laughs> Temple begins to march in the direction Pixel points up. The ground shakes a little bit. If there's any uncertainty about whether it's time for us to leave, I think now would be the time. Didn't you have something to do with the shopkeeper first? <sighs> I did. But, um... That, uh, that bard that we picked up... He got me thinking, and, uh... I've been, th I've been throwing off my balance. I've been violating my oath, so... No, I don't have any further business with that shopkeeper. Good on you. So Pixel and Paxel are going to open the network up to everybody now. Guys, I got us a new friend. And he's going to be our captain. No, he is not. We vote for him. He actually knows how to work it. Then he can be a helmsman. Uh, Dungeon Master? Yeah. Uh, when Timbo gets to the ship, can he uh, get a general look at it to see if it's... Uh... Hey, Moriarty, sir. Hello. Where hello, were hello. you? See what kind of condition if he's walking with. Um, uh, I was here, apparently. No, you were not, because you uh, completely missed the mage game. Yes, but I was physically right here. So and you well. did fall asleep. Apparently, yes. Apparently? <laughs> well, um... I'm guessing that's what happened, because uh, I felt fine, and then I look up, and I'm like, oh, hey, when did it suddenly become 6 p.m.? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, Timber, to answer your question, um, it's pretty sad looking. Uh, it's pretty much patched up with just kind of stuff slapped on like the uh, mast is a tree tied to a broken post um they there are these random whale bones that are kind of just slapped on it to make it look cool um different patches of wood um it, it looks like an orc ship <laughs> yeah it's 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 in a very sorry looking state I'll have you know, Ozilia, orc ships are very sturdy. This, however, is not one of those. 
Well, considering that it's cobbled together from bits of salvage, I would say that it's in a reasonable state. Hey, at least we didn't paint it red to go faster. <laughs> that does sound like a great idea. Ah, there it is. I was waiting for it. Uh, so Timber's getting the idea that this ship probably is not good enough to be used as a battling ram against other ships. Most definitely not. Sad conquest the, paladin noises. I, I thought the uh, whale bones were actually a functional thing rather than just look cool. Yeah, aesthetic. Yeah, well, they uh, that um, yeah, because we'd sold the surplus and we were supposed to get the ship somewhat repaired as much as we could afford. And part of that would have been actually properly anchoring the ribs to the hull to act as a reinforcement uh, re uh, buttresses to reinforce it. I, I don't remember if this actually went through or not. Yeah, no, it was something we wanted to do. I can't remember if we actually did it. I don't think that's happened yet. Because the only place that would have done that would be this island, and you guys didn't have the funds. Temple will expect for weaponry as well. I know that we did get something finished on the ship. I think it might have been that, because we got the money from the uh, sail uh, selling part of the whatever whale part it was. And Bailey. immediately put it towards the ship for repairs. Was it a full it... set of rigging? I think it might have been. Because we were using cobbled together rigging before. Yeah, scraps of sheet and a few ropes that we found lying around. See, I don't think that was for the whale bones, but yeah. Um, it should be something to make your ship more saleable. Okay. Well, that works for me. Chimbo's just like, uh, just going around on top of the ship, just getting an idea, you know, the layout. Well, we do have magical cannons, so that's that. Uh, the Martin twins will be pointing things out, uh, you know, uh, showing him the giving him a full fledged tour. Uh, they are also dungeon master. Uh, uh, yes. Size of these cannons. Um, kind of medium. Okay, to to cut it uh, to make it easier on you, uh, Luke. Are they big enough for Timber to shoot himself out of? No. <laughs> There you go. That's the actual question uh, we're going Timble for. Will Timble will comment that uh, these are the smallest cannons he's ever seen. Oh, yeah, but they're magical. So they'll be uh, even better. I doubt that. Big O is always better. And Timble will that, keep walking. <laughs> that's the smallest that you've ever seen? By rabbit folk standards, that's heavy artillery. You should see the glory of the Empress's Imperial Navy. All cannons make these look like little puppy cannons. They're kind of cute. But alas, it's better than... It's better than trying to doggy paddle. I, I I I was considering trying to swim, but it's a really far away. How did you get to this island? Well, that, my friend, is a very good question. All I remember was we were betrayed. Our castle was under siege. I was told to let the Alpha know that we were seized. Yeah, I opened up, up there. 
Yeah, no. it's sounding like it might be an internet problem there. Yeah, probably. Uh, the, we are under a siege. I was told to report to the that we were under a siege. And by the time I got there, he was about to be in. Are you moving the around at all? Yeah, it, it sounds like you must be e either your internet or more likely it sounds like you're starting to talk and then you're drifting backwards from your mic. Because literally every time uh, you start talking, it's like... Every time you start talking, it's like talking like that. It's the same part that breaks up. Huh, it could be my internet. It's so weird. Because it shows it's good, and then I start talking, that goes bad. But all I, I remember was, the best was being impaled. And now I am here. Uh, maybe check to see if your noise suppression is on. I know. I'll check that. I, I know that Discord's noise suppression has problems, and if I remember right, this is one of the things that kind of pops up with that. Also, um, if it is an internet issue, then switching the quality of service high packet priority option under voice and video, that might help. It was options for uh, volume. Well, your volume's perfectly fine. It's just that it, it occasionally cuts out. Now I turned noise suppression off. How's that? I mean, again, uh -huh. it's every time you talk for more than just a few seconds. Anyways, you were, you woke up, you remembered being stabbed, and then you woke up here? Indeed. There'd be a lot of people that are just randomly waking up on this island. Or this island chain, rather. Perhaps I have already died, and this is some sort of sick, demented afterlife. I, I can tell when people die, you are not dead. Then my duty is not finished. Do you oh. have... Do you have anything you must do? Honestly, the only thing we got going for us right now is, uh, that tower. What about the ghost ship? Oh, obviously the ghost ship first. I mean, just, you know, I wasn't going to tell him about the ghost ship, but, you know. What now? Uh, Temple will look at uh, Rosilia after she says, uh, I wasn't going to tell him about the ghost ship. <laughs> and he will, uh, he'll take a knee so he's more closer to his If you wish to travel to with me, do not lie to me. Do not keep secrets from me. I'm willing to assist you with this task to prove my wall. Do not betray my trust in you. Nothing against you. It's just that if it is an actual ghost ship, those spirits need to be put to rest. And I'm not quite sure that a paladin would do that. Not to worry, Captain Timber. We won't betray your trust at all. We can't talk for Rose, but we won't.
I will take you to this ghost ship, but if it attacks us, I will be forced to defend ourselves. Wouldn't fault you in the slightest. All I ask is that, if possible, the spirits are laid to rest rather than destroyed. I will do my best to I'm ensure sure. that they can. I'm pretty sure there's no difference in D and D between the two. It's news to me. <laughs> yeah, th th there's no difference mechanically between those two. I mean, if you want to role play it, that's up to Luke. But when you saying... punch a ghost hard enough, it suddenly becomes very peaceful. Basically, um, you kill them, and they go back to the ethereal plane, and that's, well, basically where they go to also, rest. <laughs> also, uh, uh, that kind of was me just, like, improvising, because I actually did, for a moment there, forget about the ghost ship entirely, because I am very tired right now. <laughs> that's okay. I kind of figured, Mood. and I wanted to remind everybody, because it seemed like everybody forgot... But at the same time, Luke set that as the title, and it would really suck for him to have two uh, sessions in a row where it's like, okay, we are going to do this thing today, and the party's doing that. <laughs> yeah, well, and, Temple didn't know about it. Yeah, I knew about and, it, but Temple didn't. And, and we're I would like to explore the jungle. <laughs> and I would like, to, and I would like to roll dice that don't come up one every single time. We don't get what we want, do we? And I'd like to be awake for the session. Well, you see, um, you may not get what you want, but I do my best to make sure the DMs get what they want. I assume that Luke wants us to go to the ghost ship today. I mean, that's ultimately up to you, all of you, but... uh, You're prepared and ready for that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, sounds good. I'm ready to depart whenever you are. Temple will go to the helm and investigate. So, uh, who's the suit of armor then? Uh, oh, this is Captain Timber. He's not? <sighs> Whatever. He actually knows how to sail the boat for us. Gotcha. Did, did no one else here know how to sail? Not a clue. I was getting a general understanding of it. We've got books. And in the background, as soon as she says books, Tim will go, Ha! Ah, scribe! <sighs> Wait, what does he say? <laughs> She's scribe. basically going, Ha! Ah, nerd. Nerd. Nerd! Okay. And I don't think Timber's met everybody yet. Uh, yeah, wasn't basically. Gar uh, over at the uh, crowd, he met Rosalia, Gaul, and the Morton twins. But the, the Morton was too busy showing Timber all the cannons and all the other stuff. Yeah, the Martins have been taking him on a tour throughout the ship, um, so they would have met with uh, Moriarty, the librarian. Librarian, not yet, but yeah, that will get you. Yeah, Let, let's save that for some other time. <laughs> uh, so, uh, my Audi will see this nine foot tall wolfen shaped almost suit of chain and spoopiness. PM. Where he just His looks face at is that. coupled with some sort of face shield. Where he looks at that, and then looks back to everyone, then looks at that, and looks back to everyone. You know, those things generally tend to kill people, right? I mean, you're a carnivore, you generally tend to kill people. I've okay, been... but like, not like that. Not in the racist sort of way. Also, most of us are omnivores, not carnivores. You two are freaks of nature. I'm actually not even sure that you come from nature. 
<laughs> we very much do. <laughs> the uh, deepest, I mean, darkest if... wilds of the forest that you just, uh, you, you uh, weirdos in civilization uh, haven't actually uh, uncovered us yet. But we've got a very large family, all spread throughout the world. You know, I never I'll really say, got the uh, terminology. If if it's okay with the dungeon master, or if anyone wants to like a little history or religion check on Tim, yeah, that's fine. Because he has an obvious logo on his uh, his breastplate, his shield, and his cape. He's obviously some sort of organized group. <laughs> oh, there's that one. <laughs> what the? F Six. Six rolls in a row <laughs> today. Uh, All of okay, them in uh, a one. I'll say Moriarty's uh, uh, history, de uh, his, his suspicion of Temple is definitely... Uh, Definitely, you know that this is a very hostile, aggressive nation of some sort. And uh, Pixel knows, because he's so small, that's a really good role. You basically know that they are a zealous race of aggressive people. And so oh, at, fir at first, Moriarty thought you were just like an armored up um, flesh golem. <laughs> uh, well, I guess with the history, you know that they are actually wolf-like humanoids-ish things, monster people, scary. Yeah, if you hmm. want to see what Timber looks like under the armor, look in tabletop image. I do believe I've seen the picture of the game. Kerr just posted it. Hey, tabletop image or tabletop live image? And tabletop image. Hmm. It's a crab. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a crab. Tim Tipper's a bit more uh, scaly than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I can post something on that. But go on. Um. Yeah, so they're oh, war mongers. The tabletop age. Really? Yes, I, I can put a media showing. Well, them being warmongers isn't necessarily a bad thing. So what's the uh, decree? What do you mean it's not necessarily a bad thing? Do you have any idea how much business war creates? <laughs> you know how many people die in war? Yes, that's the business. <laughs> uh, he's just gonna face palm slap you you keep forgetting who I work for I hardly fucking remember I met you yesterday <laughs> or today depending on the time frame uh, low key uh Temple's the United States Marine Call, and uh, Rosalia is General Dynamics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Temple is ready to go whenever everybody else. Well, no, I... no, because the Mardins would insist on finishing the tour before we uh, head off. Captain Price. Prices. Like, the captain's got to know his ship. All right. 
Meanwhile, Rose is just explaining to Moriarty, no, 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 look, look, when there's a war, it's soldier versus soldier, usually. These are people who are eager and happy to die. This is a great business. There's so little paperwork that has to be done. They just go right across the river. Uh, Sharon just uh, coined. Okay, good, go. There's no argument. It's perfect. Uh, no, 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 that is a, that is a romanticized view of war if I've ever fucking heard one. Well, have you ever seen war from the other side? So, uh, just so you know, Captain Timber, uh, those two, uh, Rosalia and, uh, Moriarty, they are, uh, together. We are most certainly not. That was private. Yet. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. They are a couple. He's not even gonna oh, question. But anyways, what else? Ah, so this is your, uh, th this is your cabin as the captain, right underneath the helm. Uh, and then going down. Timbo has to, like, squeeze through doors. Every time they go through a door, Timbo has to squeeze. <laughs> and the Martins are oh, just, yeah. uh, scrambling around him to not get hit by the, uh, doorway. Accommodate. And there is a goose in the captain's cabin. Yeah, actually, yeah, I was just about to bring that up. Timber <laughs> and the goose. <laughs> we don't know why the goose is in here, but you might want to eat it. What is this? Some sort of... It's a demon. Chicken? Obra chicken. <laughs> demon. I've seen demons. This is something else. <laughs> it's advanced heresy. <laughs> it hisses. It, it, it's evil. Like, you're nine feet tall. This goose is maybe a foot tall. And it is not backing down. <laughs> you can see Out of all of the things feet. I was expecting to see today, a cobra chicken was not one of them. And Timbo just keeps looking around. <laughs> Such I, exotic creatures. I kind of assume that the uh, cabin is very, very ramshackle and bare bone. Yeah, a little bit. There's I'm... there's like hammocks that are streamed across and there's the kitchen area. Well, no, I'm talking about the captain's cabin. Quarters. quarters. Oh, the quarters. Uh, Yeah, that... uh. That's got a desk in it. Um, yeah, it's not beautiful, but it is better than most of the ship. I like how you specify most because, you know, Pixel and Paxel spent a lot of time beautifying and making their nice little nest. <laughs> Taking also over the, the uh, larder. Also, the brig is very finely appointed. It's got the finest bone china. So, going down... Uh, so, down here, we've got the uh, general area where the rest of them sleep, uh, as well as the kitchen and uh, mess hall and whatnot. Whatever they call them on ships, I don't know. Uh, you are mistaken... This is obviously the food armor. Oh, but okay. Understandable. You've never been on an, an in a navy ship. Okay. <laughs> uh, over here is where we uh, where the food is stored. Uh, we've taken it, this and uh, we have set it up as our uh, little uh, our nest. Makes sense to me. We still have food in there. Uh, then there's the brig over there. Uh, Rosalia keeps all of her corpses in there. Why and here's where all the food coupons is. I'm like, we're just sitting here waiting for Timber to respond, and it's like, no, this seems, this is perfectly normal. What, you don't keep corpses? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> ah, yes, the bone womb. Continues. <laughs> now, the more this, this goes, goes on, the more I... Time. I'm very concerned about all of you. And this is the cargo hold. Uh, this is the librarian. And he keeps track of the all what? of his books. The books? What? And then Timber looks at the library, and like, you never seen him nope as fast as possible. <laughs> Timber, like, as soon as he walks in and realizes the library, he just bout faces and just is out. And like, slams the door behind him really hard. <laughs> oh, but you should meet uh, the librarian. <laughs> I did not know that non-loyalist ships had such torturous devices. <laughs> That's like the scariest place I've ever seen. Really? They had so many totems. Totems full of heresy. I'm sure it's not all bad. Books have Lornan. Lornan is heresy. I know you guys are letting me on your ship, but I do not want anything to do with you. <laughs> we found the one thing Timber is afraid of. Book. Well, okay. I think that's about it, though. Uh, Temple will, like, look around, and, like, if you, if there's, like, a heavy object, he'll, like, pick it up and, like, put it in front of where the, the book almost is and just walk. That would be the librarian's mask. Yeah. Say oh, what? Also, this door, uh, this one leads off to a mystical plane full of chickens. Like, like Temple will open the door and just like feathers start flying out. You know, this is a big old whirlwind, and he's like, ah, and closes it. <laughs> you just hear this like, Pop. we get lots of eggs from there. Is this normal for non loyalist ships? I have no nothing idea. Ab nothing about this group is normal. And then there's the dragon. I, I was there. Ah, uh, yes, the dragon. And uh, in this How room... Big is... How big is this dragon? Ah, uh, hatchling. I think we established that it's about the same... Or no, a little bit bigger than the Martins. Yeah. All right, so like a small dog size. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it's just barely in the medium sized category. Is what we established. And what is this creature? Uh this is our Uh I I, I guess son. <laughs> we what? hatched him. It's a dragon. Timbo now knows this creature as son. <laughs> a new said son, so that's the first thing you were to it as. Simba. His name now is Sonny. Ah, the Sunny D. I, I never thought I'd meet the sun. Not very, not as bright as I, I remember, but all right. Oh no, he's I not the sun. So you liked Timber. Uh-oh. <laughs> you said his name was the son. Our son? Your son. Yes, he is your son. Yeah. And then, like, Tim was like, you know that, that math goal gif where she's, like, trying to <laughs> think of different <laughs> equations? And Tim was trying to figure out how uh, a Morton makes a dragon? And none of it makes sense because he's bad at math and he just like shakes his head and keeps holding. 
Never the tell risk me I gods. took was calculated, but boy, am I bad at math. <laughs> that, that just Tim. There was a lesson to be long tail, but uh, however, I am not going to be the one to figure that out. <laughs> Temple marches back to the out of this place. This confusing labyrinth. Of labyrinthness. What did I get myself into? But yeah, we can go ahead and uh, get sailing now. Oh, so no. why do we explicitly trust call. this fella? We don't, but I mean, it's either we take him with us or he stays in that village until the angry villagers inevitably attack him, at which point in time, I mean, look at it. There'd be a couple dozen fatalities. And not that I'm really against that, but it would mean that the town would end up getting wiped out. And that's, you know, that, that, that's kind of crossing a the line there. Why, why are we... Why are we assuming that he's going to cause shit for the villagers? Well, they seemed pretty adamant on exercising their lack of survival instinct around him. They threw a rock at him. Wow, yeah, you know, yeah, you're right. Table, like, I, like, all the people in that town seem to be, like, you know, fairly nice and uh, generally... Uh, Intelligent, but no, yeah, if they what well, it's I didn't know they had death wishes. Uh can Tibble hear this conversation? Yeah. Yeah, it's like happening right in front of him. Okay. Uh Tibble will say, I guess the last time this village bond was not good enough. And he'll just ominously <laughs> walk off to uh Timber the, no. Timber no to the to the <laughs> the wheel. And take the helm. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> See, when he says that, he like Moriarty just kind of like leans back at him, eyes widen, and then just like looks back to Rosali, and he's like, he he does that hand gesture where it's like you know palm just straight up, but he's just like gestures to himself, gestures to Timber, gestures to himself, gestures to Timber. Like, do you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> so since Tilm. Timber's taking the helm. Where's it going? To beat somebody up with it? The helm is a great melee weapon if you hit someone <laughs> hard enough with it. Richard just goes up to the helm, takes hold of it, just pops right off in his hand. This is some shoddy yep. workmanship. Ah, yes. <laughs> Timber has equipped the charge in Tarj. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Timber just grabs the boat and just wheels it in a different direction. <laughs> He personally goes down to the rudder and growls at it, and it turns. This wolf sails. No, no, no! He goes against the wall and he pushes, and the boat starts going that way. So, uh, when when did we uh, turn Timber into Chuck Norris? <laughs> I think he's always he been always old. has been. <laughs> yeah. He's Pup Norris. Same as it ever was. I when I said that caddy just gave me this awful dirty look like how dare you make such a bad <laughs> pun uh, alright but uh, yeah I'm ready to start patrolling for this ghost ship they keep telling me about today is a glorious day to die I'd prefer not to I'll relax dying hey, 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 could hey. be fun no, 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 it, it really isn't. Why not? Um. Look, look, look. If you die, I can keep your body on ice while I keep studying up on how to bring you back. I can even pop in and visit you every now and then on the other side. It'll be fine. As someone who has personal experience with dying, um, it's not that fun. You've died? I've been an adventurer for a while. So I suppose you could uh, give me some tips on how you came back. Uh, revivify? I'm going to be trying to study that right now, but uh, no, one, no one told me the, how long the book was. So it's going to be a while. There is magic that brings you back. 
But the fact of the matter is, you remember being dead. And? It's not that great. It's all a matter of perspective. Well, talk to Timber. Well, let's see how let's long his ankle, and we can go. <laughs> all right. Aye, uh, aye, Capitan. I'm just going to go over and start raising the anger. Aha! You accept him as captain. I will throw that you in the That is majority. Uh, Tibble will, 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 Tibble will chuckle to himself and go, I mildly tolerate democracy. <laughs> democracy, a second favorite to us there. Authoritarian totali totalitarian rule. Blah, 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 blah. Now tell Temple to spell it. No. No. no okay. I personally <laughs> just prefer a benevolent monarchy. If you tell him to spell it, he'll spell IT. <laughs> Well, off to the sea. You you really want to see his brain his brain boil. Hey Timber, how many letters are in authoritarian? Eight. <sighs> I will always answer eight if I don't know. Because that's the biggest, and biggest is the bestest. Yes, eight is the biggest number. There is what no color number is the cold of Mama Aqua? I'm pretty sure the Empress knows. She knows everything. She has this grand plan. And if you were to I tell you me said that you, so if you grand, didn't know the answer, then was you. Be eight. That's any number. That's, you said how big is or what color? I said is. what color is. What color is. I mentioned that I'm very tired right now. Well, there's yellow, there's blue, and then there's gray. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, canines have limited vision. Do volpines have that too? I don't know what you're talking about, but I am going to sail this ship. Ah, uh, no, I, I was asking the bard. I've seen a rainbow and I've seen all of its colors. That is deliciously vague. I wouldn't. No, no. <laughs> Well, You're asking her... if I've got sight impairment to color. And I'm telling you, I've seen a rainbow, which is generally what most people consider as the color spectrum. Well, yeah, and I've seen all of its colors. My rainbow isn't your rainbow. We better hurry before Timber <laughs> sells the ship. Just one, Once again, <laughs> the necromancer okay. and the bard are having yet another philosophical debate. Rose, can I call you Rose? <laughs> yes? Uh, let me start by saying, what? Okay, is that going to be followed up with the fuck? Because that's usually what people say to me. Uh, you know what? I was going to I was gonna add it in there as a, uh, you know, uh, postscript. All right, all right, Master of the Dungeon, let's Float this battle fortress. <laughs> Onwards. All right. We have a dungeon. Well, I mean, there's the brig. I'm literally I talking like to dungeon. God right now. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see I'm on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Raise the angle. Stop embarrassing me in front of God. <laughs> The Empress is watching. She thoughts. So, as you are all um, having philosophical debates and getting this sh ship underway, um, and you getting lost, kick off and you you start heading towards the direction that this shady guy, who gave you the job, told you to go which was to the east. Um, 
and you're sailing for a good ways um, when it starts to kind of get dark on you all. Um, kind of more nighttime. Um, so you've probably been sailing for about six hours. Um, so it's up to you guys if you want to sail through the night or if you want to take a rest. Probably sail through the night. Yeah, no reason not to. I mean, <laughs> I'll rest if no one else will. I would say rest. I guess Timber is the one actually driving the ship, so it's up to uh, Timber if he's going to rest or. Uh, let's see. Timber seeks to seeks battle, so he will continue to float this battle fortress to glorious destiny. It's okay. a boat. Water fortress. Um. You're all kind of sailing through. Um, and you, those of you that are still awake are keeping a watchful eye on the sea. And it's probably about another hour before you all start to see this green glow off in the distance. Start ringing the warning bell, waking everybody up. You guys have a warning I uh, just cover my ears and wait for him to finish with that annoying racket. I didn't know you guys had a Actually, bell. Actually, uh, yes, we do have a bell, though it is down in the martin nest. Oh my god, because it's shiny, right? I literally yeah. did buy a bell for them. <laughs> but it's oh down god. in there in the nest. <laughs> How far away is this uh, glowing gray object? Um, this is probably I'm trying to picture it, and I, I would say a good mile or so out. All right, uh, Temple will try to maneuver the boat in a way that it will eventually uh, cut it off, let's say. Intercept course. Even if it has to take a short maneuver. Okay. Um, so you're, you're sailing towards it. Um, and this is definitely coming into sight as a, as a, as a ship itself. Uh, it seems only like the hull, um, or like the bottom of it is what's really glow glowing green. Uh, the rest of it looks like it's pretty normal. Um, but as se as soon as it catches wind of you, it makes a sharp turn and starts sailing away. Temple will uh, give pursuit, minding that he does not want to approach from the side because that's usually where cannons are at. Ghosts that run away. Interesting. Oh no, the Reaper's Runners. <laughs> well, there's a couple different reasons why they could be running. At the top of the list of suspects is the giant paladin. 
If he's got any wards or blessings that might be spooking them. Uh, Dungeon Master? Yes. Does Timbo believe that his ship can keep up with this ship? Uh, yes. Up the sails. Timbo will start balking autos to, uh, yeah, make the sails go full. And he is making a beeline for them. Okay. Um, this ship is basically trying to zigzag. Um, which on the sea isn't really very effective, but they're still trying anyways. Would Tempo recognize this as like evasive maneuvers? Yeah. Temple will announce to the crew that this is curious because we are not firing upon them yet. Do you want us to fire? Uh, not I yet. assume since we're chasing them, we have our nose to them and don't have angle. Yeah. As someone who plays Sea of Thieves religiously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If these guys were smart, they'd just zig once and get the broadside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tempo's trying to keep keep track of, you know, the way their boat's pointing, just in case they try to uh, do a, a broadside maneuver on us. Um, okay. Uh, is there anything... Uh, Timbo will call down to the crew and ask if they can see any identification on said boat. Okay. Do they do they fly a flag? Um. They do. Uh, we're gonna have you guys roll first a perception check because it's dark. Do you say perception? Yeah. All right, this is visual perception, not audio reception, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, are we within sixty feet yet? Um, you guys are telling them, so probably. All right, then I do have an action uh, after whatever's about to happen, since we're within sixty feet. <clears throat> just want me to just say it now. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, once we're within range. I summon Unseen Servant in the rigging of the other ship with the instruction to start untying every single knot they come across. <laughs> Does this other ship even have sails? Uh, yes, they do. Okay. It's not just tattered masts. I see nothing. Um, Rose, did you roll twice? Uh, I had I had rolled uh, perception earlier when they were having that conversation below decks just to see if I could hear it. I rolled a oh, three, so I was oh, like, eh, okay. no, nah, I can't hear anything. All right, who's Paxel persuading? I think he accidentally clicked uh, persuade. <laughs> yeah, perception. So it looks like it, they'll both fall. Okay. Um, timber. Do you have dark vision? Yes. Okay. And then, Rose, you rolled well enough. Um, so it's Timber and Rose that can see. Um, there is a certain symbol on it. I'm going to have you all roll. We'll go with uh, Insight. So the two that passed get to roll it. Okay. So. Awesome. Timber's really good at that. Uh, insight. Okay. Um, I'd say you both passed. Um, this particular symbol is that of a merchant guild. I 
A merchant guild? Merchant guild, yeah. Uh, Temple will call out, uh, it appears to be a merchant vessel. That's why they're running. They probably don't even have cannons. Well, merchants can Strange be that a too. ship would glow, though. What do you say? Strange that a ship is glowing. And uh, merchants can have ghosts, too but they could also be faking it in order to keep people away. Do we, is there anybody out on deck? Do we see anybody on the decks? Um, no. Um, there's only, I guess, one person that would be on the deck. Um, and being so dark, all you can really catch is a shimmer of uh, blue and green. And another person up in the sails untying it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I thought you said it was Unseen well, Servant. Yeah, Unseen Servant. You can only see him uh, if he's under um, something that reveals uh, magic and reveals yeah. things and such. But currently, the only thing we have that does that is the um, Lantern of Revealing, which Pixel and Paxel have. Uh, Dungeon Master, mm. I desire to go to the right side of the boat and see if we can do like a, you know, side by side thing. Like trying to talk to them or? or... Yeah. Okay. Well, um, since the rigging's being damaged. <laughs> they're, they're slowing down. So it's pretty easy to pull yourself up to the side. Can I do a boarding maneuver? Uh. Describe how. Uh, I go up into the riggings, grab a rope, and swing over. Sure. Uh, give me an acrobatics check. Okay. Um, as you're getting set up to do this, um, their ship is basically all but coming to a stop. And this blue and green figure kind of makes a dash towards the uh, their brig. Um, our lovely bard does some cool swinging ends up on their ship. I do a flip. Sure. <laughs> Once he's on the ship, he immediately draws his rapier and starts pacing about curiously and quietly. And uh, he starts to step towards the deck to head for the stairs, which I assume he went down. Okay. Um, there's a single lone door at the bottom of some stairs. All right. Um, does anybody else want to get on board? Uh, um, Timbo will keep the boat, uh, you know, close to their boat, but he will call out and be a good distraction of yelling for the other side to identify themselves. Um, once Unseen Servant has been given its instructions, I don't need to maintain line of sight on it anymore, right? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Correct. All right. Um, I feel like there's a distance cap, though. 60 feet. That's why I want to know, know when we were within 60 feet of the enemy ship. I instruct... Possible enemy ship. I, I instruct Unseen Servant to climb down from the rigging and go alongside Moriarty and jump in front of any hostile actions. Basically take the first bullet kind of thing. 
Well, since I don't know how many are down there, I'm gonna head back up from that door. And uh, is the captain's quarters uh, available from the top deck? Um, yes. Okay, I'm gonna head over there and I'm gonna open that door. And see uh, in it there. is locked. Oh. Um. I'm going to throw a grappling hook across. Well, as it just so happens, I happen to pick up something just for this occasion. Uh, who's throwing <laughs> the grappling hook? Gar. Ah, okay. Um, Moriarty kneels down as he gets his th thieves' tools out. <laughs> and, um, yeah, oddly enough, on this ghost ship, you currently have a ghost that is standing watch over you. <laughs> We're not sh quite sure that it's the ghost ship yet. Though it is very strange. Um, Gar, you're able to make it across because you got a grappling hook and that's very helpful. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll for your thieves tools. Slide of hand. Um. Yeah. Yeah, give me slight hand. Oh. Wouldn't it be dexterity for block picking? I think so it's slight of hand, hand is a dex roll. Fair enough, I guess. Um, okay. Wow, you have a plus eight? Yeah. Jeez. Um, you kind of hear a faint and it kind of creaks open. Old dingy Lux. My favorite. And he just pushes the door. What? No, he doesn't do that. He's going to check the door for traps, strip wire, and stuff like that. Um, Maybe roll. a bucket on the top. <laughs> roll uh what am I rolling I'm gonna say intimidation intimidate yes intimidate the door not perception okay. god damn it that was a good roll <laughs> <laughs> uh you say perception yeah okay I refuse this. <laughs> I want my 18. <laughs> uh, you see nothing. Okay. He kicks the door in. Okay, with a big bang, uh, you pretty much didn't need to lockpick it because it was such a weak door and you pretty much just knocked off its hinges <laughs> by doing that. Yeah, but Moriarty is a strength and I. Okay, it's a really weak door. <laughs> <laughs> um, inside is a, a desk similar to like what's on your ship. Uh, there's some kind of gold trimming kind of along the walls. Uh, there's a chest in the back. Um, there's kind of like a cabinet. But there's no one in there. Uh, Moriarty's is going to go immediately for the chest as his uh, pupils dilate. Okay, that is <laughs> also locked. Thieves tools. <laughs> okay, ahead, are you a bard or are you a rogue? Yes. Uh, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. <laughs> oh, you're yes. a vogue. I like to think of myself as a trickster. <laughs> a jack of many trades. Many, many trades. Yeah, go ahead and roll uh, your sleight of hand. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, this is less successful. And, uh, you kind of hear the tumblers inside. Like, 
roaring sound. You hear the tumbles, tumblers click before what? Another whirring, like a whirring sound kind of comes from it. And uh, yeah. it's stuck fast. It's stuck now? Yeah. Okay. Well, I tried. And then I'm just gonna fucking take my dagger and slap it into the seam of the chest and try to pry it open. Uh, give me a strength check. Well, he's doing all this. Is the, have we pulled up alongside so that we can, you know, board without having to do the whole Pirates of the Caribbean thing? Yes. Hey! <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, wrench it out. <laughs> crit, 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 she, crit. She, violence is always the answer. <laughs> what is with the dice today? They're all over. Crit, 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 crit. <laughs> you uh, jam your dagger in, and you you push down, um, and it starts to your dagger kind of starts to uh, kind of make a crinkling sound a little bit. Do you want to continue pushing? Uh, I'm going to be smart about it, and I'm going to try and, like, shift my dagger here and there and see if I can't get better leverage at one point or another, but I will keep going. This. Okay. It's a cheap dagger, and I don't know what's in here, but I really okay. want it. Um, it actually pops open, but at the expense of your dagger, which breaks. Okay. He tosses the dagger. And inside you find an even worse dagger. <laughs> a, d a plus one dagger. Ooh. Um, Guys, I will be right back. All right. Okay. All right. Um, well, he's doing all that since we've had the opportunity to actually pull up alongside proper. Um, my water skin that is full of holy water, I take that out and I let loose just a couple drops onto the deck of the ship to see what happens. Uh, congratulations, you made the deck wet. <laughs> so it's not steaming, hissing, bubbling, or anything like that? No. The ship's personal existence is not unholy. Uh, Dungeon Master? Yeah. Uh, since Temple knows, you know, how ships walk and stuff, and uh, does he does he have a feeling that he could leave the the wheel alone right now because they're stopped? Uh, oh, there's you have all the moving. sails unfurled, so no. No, okay. Temple will stay at his post then. He will look. He he'll look to see if he sees anything on the boat, and apparently, because nobody answered him, he'll yell again. Uh, what are you yelling? Uh, he's basically calling for them to identify themselves. Okay, yeah. There's there's no response again. Okay, I'm back. Oh, Sorry, back. our uh, microwave uh, died very bad. Oh, no. <laughs> Who killed it? So. Uh, Dungeon Master? Yes. Time to update uh, the Temple will uh, set the parking brake on and <laughs> is trying to make a boat. There is a parking brick actually for boats. It's called the anchor. Yeah, exactly. So you're dropping anchor. Uh, is the other boat stopped? Yeah. All oh. right. Yeah, he'll drop anchor. Well, I would assume that when we pulled up alongside the other boat, that we would have put gang planks or run ropes over. So they are tethered, aren't they? To each yeah. other. Actually. I got an even better idea. Dungeon Master? Yes. How heavy is the anchor? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Y you don't understand. Timball <laughs> is a very big, strong boy. <laughs> I do understand. I know what his strength is. Yes. Um, I think he can deadlift like 800, so... If Hold you're on, planning on up. throwing it, I'm going to have you give me a strength roll with disadvantage. Okay. Temple will 
grab the the ankle and try to toss it at the other ship. Oh, jeez. Temple will say, look out. And he's going to uh, athletics at disadvantage. How uh, large is this ship, by the way? Strength at disadvantage. Oh, strength? Okay. Um, it's probably about the same size as yours. So not huge. So this... Because apparently an anchor can weigh up to 50,000 pounds. Oh. 50? So what size... Up to, but what size is our ship? Um, uh, you actually had a lengthy debate about the exact model, and we never settled on one. I thought we did, but I... I just need general size, no, I, because I, I have a chart here that bases itself on size. Uh, small, medium. Small to medium? So, medium. say 36 to 40 feet? Schooner, yeah. Um... General anchor weight on that is 15,000. That feels wrong. Let me double check this. That feels way wrong. Anyways, yeet! <laughs> Size <laughs> normally in stock ranges from 3,000 to 10,000 pounds. I mean, I guess these things had to stop whole ships. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah. Okay. But I'm, I'm like, unfortunately, I don't even Oosh. know if I don't even know if Timber could lift it, supposedly. <laughs> um, yeah, you're not able to pick this thing up. It's all right. Freaking heavy. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yep. Nope. That, that's my back. Ugh. And Timber will drop it. <laughs> Points for effort. <laughs> it would have been amazing if it had worked. Nobody saw that. Temple <laughs> makes it go down. I saw everything. No, you didn't. <laughs> now remember, no lying. <laughs> Temple pushes it over. <laughs> oh, whatever causes the thing to go down. Okay, um, so I'm going to say that you're all on the other ship. I don't think there's anyone that wanted to stay behind. Um, Moriarty, inside your yep. chest, <gasps> you find, if I can open the right one. Um, I eat it. You eat it? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. I was about to say you find a candle of the deep, so you were just sitting there eating candles. <laughs> uh, Timber can relate to that. <laughs> just chowing down on wax. Um, I'm sure he's eaten some crayons before. Here, I'll write it in the... There's common. There it is. Uh, don't these candles have some sort of special property? Uh, a little yeah. bit deep, doesn't it? That they, uh, they work underwater? Deep. Yeah. And you also find a shift weave. What is a shift weave? Uh, you need to have it identified. Well, what is it? What does it look is like? a material... So it just looks like an ingot? No, like fabric. It's a magical material that allows you to change its appearance. Usually uh, some kind of outfit or something. Uh, you need to know the command words first. Yeah. So we need to get it identified to figure out how to use it, but what, what kind, like, is it an outfit or what? It looks like a potato shirt like a sack shirt like one of those things that you stereotypically see you know crazy crazy poor people wearing okay 
That's what it looks like at the moment, anyways. Um, and Thanks. okay, uh, a candle final... and some silks. Yeah, and the final thing you find is you're gonna love this. A gun. Two hundred gold. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Dungeon Master? Yes. Temple's on the ship, right? Yes. The other ship? Yes. Uh, I would like to do one action. What is that? He is going to use his divine sense and walk. And uh, he can do this once a day because uh, he's a paladin. And it's, uh, let's see... 60 feet, Timble can locate uh, Celestial Fiend or Undead. It only identifies what it is, like if there's like a, a fiend or something, they'll tell him here, there's a fiend or a Celestial. Basically like Holy Raider. Um, would Unseen Servant count as Undead? Um, I don't actually know. I'm going to say yes, but let me look. Well, it, as far as flavoring goes, uh, unse it, Rose's Unseen Servant is actually a ghost, so would a ghost count as uh, undead? Here be two seconds. Um, I'm going to say yes. And Timber, I'm sorry, can you repeat what your, your bark does one more time? Uh, it, it, uh, defend, it, look, <clears throat> let's see. Until the end of your next turn, you know the location of any celestial, fiend, or undead within 60 feet of you. That is okay, not to behind total cover. Okay, so yeah, it does tell exact locations. Because let's say, if it only says, is this present, then you're going to get a false positive from Unseen Servant. He'll know it's there, but and he'll know that it's undead, but he won't know what it is. Okay, so your super bark resonates and you get one blip and Timber will face right that direction front. it is right in front of Moriarty Temple will withdraw his longsword and uh, tell Moriarty watch out there's something right there no Timber okay, no, I'm back. That's, What's that's, up? Timber no that one's mine that one's a friend one being alerted to the the ghost uh, that I had watching. Timbo accidentally back. found the ghost <laughs> the that Tanya room. has, that Rosalia has, and uh, false positive. Because mm. he doesn't know about the unseen solvent. All he knows there was a ghost there. I think unseen solvent is technically a ghost. We're counting it as one. Okay. Uh, for for, flavor, for yeah. flavor, because Rose is a necromancer, Unseen Servant is Unseen Servant is a ghost. Specifically, right. it's the ghost of her dead dad, who was savagely killed by Morbid. carnivores. Who was savagely killed by carnivores, which is part of why she's racist against carnivores. So, uh, yeah, Moy already knows that Temple says there's a ghost, and Rosalia is saying that's, ghost. and you see that Temple has. The largest longsword you've probably ever seen. Sephiroth, Sephiroth. <laughs> Sephiroth. It's a two-handed weapon for, uh, that can be held with one hand. It's a versatile. But it's just... It's extremely a claim long. Yeah, it, it would be a claim on to an average person. All right, then. And Moriarty kind of glances around, not seeing a ghost. He just raises a brow to timber. There's a ghost behind you. What? Well, no, that's all ghost. <laughs> Confused paladin noises. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Look, look. It, it's ours. It's, um, okay. Is there anything, any loose items laying around on the deck? Uh, there's, like, some rope. That's about it. I've loosened up some gold and this candle. Well, and... I, I instruct Unseen Servant to pick up and waggle around one of the ropes. 
Like, see, look, look, it's it's our it's our ghost. That's a friend. Temple will lower his longsword just a bit, and then he hears there's a candle, and he's like, "You gonna eat that?" <laughs> No, I plan on using it. Okay, fine. Finders keep ours, but if you see another one, I'm kind of hungry. Uh, we'll find you some meat. Yeah, that sounds good right now. Alright, well... It is very strange that this... This... Water sled... Seems to be abandoned, but took invasive maneuvers. There's obviously something controlling this thing. Let's go check below deck. Uh, DM? Yes? You said that there were some cabinets and whatnot too in this room? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna check those. To see if there's not like a key or something. Um. And and if there's other things too, that'd be also great. (laughs) No, it's just the cabinets, um, and then the desk, but the desk is pretty, it's got like a quill and ink and blank parchment. No manifest. Hey, I could use more ink and parchment. Well, they are yours. (laughs) It's a one ounce bottle, I assume? Yeah. I've got two now. And how much? How, how many one sheets of parchment? Parper, pape, pa, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bank ball. Uh, five. <laughs> okay, I have ten now. Um, and in the cabinet is, um, what appears to be, um, kind of weathered maps of the area. Um. A log that is listing uh, sold and purchased. Um, ah, this was a slave ship. Goods. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> slaves are considered goods. <laughs> um. And a small list of what appears to be uh, names, but they are not in common. Uh, what language are they in? Uh, what languages do you know? I believe I should know Celestial and Sylvan. Okay, it's in Sylvan. E. I do not have that language. Okay. Um, I wonder if this if if the palette celestial. Huh. Well, he said that it's in Sylvan, so. Oh. Give me just a second. Let me. The Vardy boy can read it. Uh, The Martins can as well. Paxel. Yes, oh, Paxel, one of you guys. Uh, one, of you, one of you guys should stay up here just in case something tries sneaking behind us. Don't want to leave the ship totally yoinkable, if you get what I mean. Aye, aye, Captain. So what what are, what are these? What, what what is this on again? Uh, this is a list of what appears to be the crew members. Okay. Are we about to play Return of the Obra Dinn? Because I'm so down for playing Return of the Obra Dinn. I don't know. Oh. Well, 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 they're all you know. 
huddled around the maps that I can't read. Um, Go on. I would, I would like to use magical tinkering on one of the three rabbit skulls in my inventory to make it glow as a light source. And then use mage hand and, and uh, kind of just like to toss it down below decks. Like kind of open, open the door below decks a little bit and kind of uh, carry it in, I guess. Um, below deck, the door is locked. Damn it. I stuck, okay. I stuck up my little floating skull then. <laughs> um, that's all the names on the thing. Also, hey, for on. reference, <clears throat> Return of the Oberdin is a game where you're an insurance collector and you go on a boat and you see how everyone died with a special stopwatch. Oof. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, and you hey, literally uh, just have oh, a know. manifest of names, and you need to figure out how everyone died. Oh my god. Toshime. Hmm? Hey, Gaul, let's, let's go investigate the ship. Okay. See if we can find anyone. That works for me. Alright, uh, Dungeon Master, Gaul, and Temple will go and investigate the rest of the ship. Uh, the ship is pretty small. You've pretty much all explored the top deck, minus some. Uh, like well, I guess we're going thing. down below deck then. There's a door here, but it's blocked. Or locked, I mean. We'll just see about that. Dungeon Master? Yeah. Uh, Timbo will barrel at the door and attempt to make that door not there anymore. Rose will dive out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, give me a strength check. Wouldn't that be athletics? Uh, no, I want strength. All right. <clears throat> Oh, come on. I saw that 17. It wanted it <laughs> wanted so hard. Well, I rolled once and it didn't take it. Okay, this door is actually surprisingly sturdy, unlike the captain's door. So we both Moriarty walks up uh, kicking this chest along because it's got gold in it. <clears throat> and then he kind of just stops seeing Timber actually having trouble with the door. Are you going to take a, a moment to... Well, I... You were taking too long describing everything, so uh, Pixel is going to shoot acid at the, uh, the uh, locking mechanism and such. Oh, good idea, actually. I was I was literally just thinking about exactly that with Chromatic Orb. Um, the lock kind of immediately starts to uh, rust. Um, you're welcome to give it a try now. Another kick. Three, two, one. Oof. So Timber is squeezed into this tiny little thing and just cannot get the right angle to do anything. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gar is like, <clears throat> cracks his knuckles, let me show you how it's done. And just bangs the door open. And mm -hmm. you're all met with this scream. Like the scream of a frightened person or like the scream of a banshee? You're kind it's kinda of hard to tell. But it's Hey! We're here to people. kill you. <laughs> My god. 
open broadcast. Pixel? So this is just an absurdly loud noise then. Aunt Rose is just straight up just covering her ears. Not motorizing just yet. We're doing aggressive investigation. <coughs> they surrender. What? They surrender. They do? Yes. Oh, wait, I, I guess I don't is know. Is that what they're saying? I think that's what they're saying. I was wrong. I don't know, Sylvan. Uh, I could have sworn they did. Um, so, I've still got the, um, the, uh, glowing rabbit skull being held by Mage Hand. Hold, hold on a second. Uh... Tip was trying to kick his door, but I'm too dummy thick and I just can't get through the doorway. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm ready. So, so you're um, saying they're, they're surrendering? Yeah, um, since I've still got uh, the glowing rabbit skull being carried by Mage Hand, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have it move over top of them to clearly illuminate them, whoever they are. Okay, um, they kind of come out from the shadows and you see this uh this man who's a peacock um kind of slink out and he's got his wings up in the air like please don't hurt me um and behind him is a cockatoo um a turkey. A rooster. dungeon master. Yeah. Uh, upon seeing people walking out and hearing that they're surrendering, Temple will uh, put his lock away in like a drilled military manner. Just shink, shink, whoosh. okay. Moriarty's going to be holding the parchment, and he's going to take that uh, little ink bottle he has, dip his pen in, and then look at them. Um, the peacock is the one that's speaking. Sorry, it's all in the chat because they speak a different language. Yep. Yes, but for the viewers, I would like it if you guys actually, you know, did it a bit more on voice. I mean. <clears throat> all right. So. Boring to sit here listening uh, to silence and the bunch of text nobody can understand popping up. Moriarty is uh, he's looking through this list of names and uh, then he looks yep. to the first one he asks in their native tongue is this Phil? to which he seems to give an affirmation and then Moriarty uh, gives a little check mark next to that name and then just kind of nods to the side alright who's next? and he just he's, he, he's only speaking in Sylvan as he's going down this list to see if everyone's accounted for. Um, there are five of them. Um, and they all kind of give an affirmation in their sylvan tongue. <clears throat> um, that they are indeed all of the people on that list that you found. Okay, he asks them what happened. Alright, I'm going to type it out and then you can translate. So there's a nice little back and forth of him talking in Sylvan. They talk back to him for a good moment, I assume. And then he's just going to softly nod and turn to the party. It looks like they were uh, attacked in the middle of a rout. Are these, are these guys ghosts or are they just like regular people? Uh, they, from what you can tell, regular people. They didn't trigger Timber's 
uh, little paladin blip. The ghost sight. Could you ask them why their boat is glowing? He he turns to them and asks them that. Why is the boat glowing? What are you doing? How dare you? How Not in that tone, but you know. It, it's algae? What? <laughs> they say it's algae. And it looks cool. I'm gonna go, go over. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna quickly walk over to the side of the ship and look over at the glow. Um, can I can I visually confirm it looks like a bioluminescent plant? Yes, it does. All right, that checks out. We were told people from the island were going missing when the ship was coming around. Uh, this is from the um, Cardinal. Do any of you five speak common? It would make this a lot easier. I would like stairs, I'm going to say no. Uh, uh, he asks what her name was. <clears throat> who who was the one that said that folks went missing? Um, it was the uh, it was like it a was lizard the guy. Contact that we. It was a what? It was like some lizard guy. Yeah, he re he relays that back to them, saying that it's not that guy's wife, probably. And that's a lizard fella. All right. I'm going to ask them what year it is. Um... I don't know if that's ever actually been defined. <laughs> um, I know. Uh, just, just tell, just tell me if I get an answer back that is anything common. That, era. Yeah. Al alternative. If, do they tell me? Oh, it's two centuries ago. Uh, or no. do oh, they yes. tell me the you current year? Eight. I mean, alternatively, there's. I do still have that holy water. Just to just you know, flick a little bit on the fingertips if it sizzles on contact. Hey, they're ghosts. Uh, they do give the correct year. Okay. <laughs> well, my Audi. I. Uh, ask them if they've seen any other glowing ships. That's probably a good idea. I asked them if they'd seen anything else that's out of the ordinary on the waters, like other ghost ships. Right. Uh, just as I thought, that's a negative. So my professional opinion here is uh, you got a bunch of people who like some algae on their ship, which is weird. Um, I, I, but... I can I can kind of get it. The glowing lights on the bottom. It's, it's a yeah. statement. Yeah. But um, real so strange. I, said as out, in real life, of... I have LEDs all over my desk. Outside of letting plants grow on their ship, which is probably making the wood rot really fast. Um, outside of that, um, yeah, it, everything seems above board here. These, the, the these these seem like flesh beings. They are 
uh, rightfully scared. They know the current year. They uh, are all accounted for, according to the ledger. Um, With your current treasure chest held in your hands. Do they understand common? I asked if they, I asked if any of them spoke common. None of them responded, so I'm assuming no. Boy, Audi. Can you tell these people that we do apologize for stomping all over their water sled? He gives a nod and he relays the um he relays the apology but he looks back to that one guy he's like he reassures that one guy that his wife has nothing to do with this as we were simply following the tip of a sort of lizard sailor type but I can check up on your wife if you really want me to um while they're having that discussion, I'm going to instruct Unseen Servant to go back up into the rigging and re-secure the things that it untied. And then I'll take a look at the door to see what it would take to repair it. Okay. Um, and when we get back up there, our ship is gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paxel is I mean, up there. Paxel is on the ship. Yeah, he's uh, up on our ship. Plus the librarian and the goose. Uh, dungeon master? Yes. Uh, once Temple uh, relays the mild apology, he is going to turn in a military battle and return to his post. Okay. And start, you know, start getting the ship ready to sail again. Um. How does this man respond to me, can, like, trying to reassure him about his wife? Because he's talked about his wife, like, three times now. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? How does this guy respond to me trying to reassure him it's not about his wife? Because he keeps talking about his wife. Um. Here, this is his response. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> uh, you know you can go back, right? Like to your wife. It's been like what a day, maybe two. We can we can help you guys. How many of you guys left your wives? Um, the uh, rooster speaks up. Oh. We're gonna Jimbo will go up to pack a second, hole. but uh. Hold his finger out and like give him a little head pat for being a good boy. Two. two. Who are you head patting? Pixel. Paxel. Because he stayed back on the ship. Um, the peacock speaks up. <laughs> okay, hey, fair enough. Um, I'm guessing you don't want to return to that island then. Fair enough. 
What are you hoping well, right now? I guess now? since they're going to keep talking through text, uh, we'll just go ahead and do some role play on the side then. So the viewers are entertained. Uh, Paxel will be very happy with the head pats and uh, he, he will uh, head down to the lower decks and start rummaging through the various supplies in the Martin Nest and gathering together uh, foodstuffs to prepare a small little meal. So I kind of like uh, actually dozed off for just a moment there. What was the response in regards to the door? Like how bad of a state of damage? Uh, if any of you know mending, it will be an I easy have time. mending actually as a cantrip. That's an easy fix. All right, but yeah, I fixed the door and put it back together. <laughs> um, say it over chat. Say it over chat. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I mean, though. Okay. Uh, Moriarty asks if they have any common magical items with mending because they have stated that they are transporting Dude. some common magical items. They're also a band of men who were generally unhappy with their marriage who the captain hired because they were unhappy with their marriage, so they have all left their wives. So, did we... Did, did we just hunt down a floating stag party? Is that what's going on here? Um, a floating stag party who are legitimate merchants, and also that chest I picked was uh, what they're carrying, so uh, we're not taking that. So are you going to set it down in front of him? Uh, yeah, if I'm still carrying it. I'm going to set it down in front of them and say, y'all need a better lock. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Cardinal is going to speak up, the one who was originally talking about his wife the most. Okay. Oh. Okay. I can I can I can give a message to your wife, sure. Um sorry I gotta look at something real quick. Do I know which island that is? Uh, that is the island you guys came from. Right, okay. <clears throat> the one that told Tempo to go away. No more metal boys. For now. Whoa! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so this guy wants me Remember, to pass We are getting a, a lot of very loud background noise from you. Okay, I'll hit, I'll hit mute. Thank you. So this is, so this cardinal here wants me to give a message to his wife. Uh, who is on the island that we just came from. Her name is Tula. And the message she wants me to pass along is that she's an evil hag who deserves every unhappiness in her life and that uh, he wants a divorce. Uh huh. But he says he's got a gift for me if I do that, so. Uh, plus one quest accepted. <laughs> I, I asked this guy his name just to verify.
Harry Harding. Okay. Uh, I ask him if it's all right that I pen that down and give it to her as a parchment. He will sign it. Okay. Uh, so the bard is going to make uh, a divorce letter. <laughs> <laughs> Um, after it's kind of written up, uh, he signs it. Uh, he signs his name in Sylvan. All right. And he gives a nod, rolls it up, and uh, tucks it in his satchel. He says he'll get it to her. And, uh... He holds something out. The bard moves to accept it. Um, it's a glowing blue orb. Oh! Within it are... Uh, six charges. And each charge can be expend one expended once per person. Ah. Uh. This is the aquatic soul. The aquatic... Is this a thing that gives swim speed and water breathing? Uh, this is a homebrew item. Okay. I have added the aquatic soul to my inventory. All right. How much does it weigh? It's like a pound. Okay. Just one. <clears throat> and he will bow his head respectfully, and he'll look to them all and ask them, uh, hey, are you guys, like, besides your merchant shipment here, y'all doing anything? Delivering the package, but no, we're fairly new, not a lot of jobs yet. I I turn and look at the rest of my crew with you, Timber, Pixel Pax, Lagar, Ros Rosalia. Do we want to hire? Maybe see if they see if they want to work for us. We will be going back to the island. Right, I'm just saying it might make things easier on the rest of us if we have a uh, proper ship's crew in place. Instead of just ourselves. Temple sees no, uh, no qualms with this being bad, but he, he'll mention that he is not in control of the budget. Just the boat. He's not in charge of the of the what? The budget. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Don't worry, the Martins can take care of that. He looks back to them and says, "How would you like to come sail with us? Sail for us? We're adventurers, so there's a lot of coin to be made in that." Um, they kind of turn to each other and kind of whisper and it's... um Moriarty is gonna go ahead and he's gonna wink at the rooster <laughs> the rooster uh you get a blush out of him <laughs> um the fox is trying to get in the hen house. <laughs> um, 
they're kind of whispering amongst themselves for a minute. <clears throat> and uh, the peacock, who is their captain, uh, steps forward. He nods to him. Ooh. Ooh, that's a pretty big ask. They want half the loot. Well, if they want half the loot, which half do they want? The cloth or the candle? Oh, no, that's theirs. They get to keep that. <laughs> like that that's that's all theirs. They need to deliver that. That's their package to deliver. I think they're they're saying if they're going to be our crew, they want half the loot of things that we find from here on out. How about I uh how about I just negotiate a gold payment for them? Okay, what well, do you offer? You may warn them about what we're going to be doing because there might not be much gold in conquering the tower. I, I, di I did mention to them that we are adventurers. <clears throat> so they do they do already know we we are adventurers. Um... How much gold do we currently have as a party? It depends if the Martins are... Because we have the party sheet. Well, first I'm gonna... I'm just gonna ask them if they'd be interested in a paid rate instead. Uh, because we're adventurers, we might need the magic items. On our party sheet, we have 117 gold, 22 silver, and 78 copper. <clears throat> they want a weekly payment um there's five of them right yeah why don't we set aside i i, I recommend we try and set aside about 50 gold between the lot of us and just pay them a weekly 10 gold a pot and what are they running away for 10 gold each yeah for a week's worth of work slightly better than a day's worth i mean yeah A lot of that's a lot of money for me. I'm basically flat broke. Um, hmm. Timbo goes on, you know, he kind of tilts his head and goes, You guys are getting paid. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's a conscript, he's never been paid. <laughs> I guess we'll have to sell the ship and use theirs. Or we could sell their ship. Because, you know, it's literally got algae growing into it. It's not our ship to sell. But to say, yeah, Fair wait, enough. When, when, when did selling their ship come into the picture? <laughs> we'll sell your ship to pay you. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so they they agreed to the terms. They agreed to those terms, but we haven't we haven't decided on those terms yet. 
Um... <clears throat> So they, they do say that they will gladly sell magical items for us uh, as well. So if we do have magical items and whatnot, we can just route it through them to get sold. Well, I'd we say no, to... especially since most of us can't even understand them. I'd really rather not have to deal with uh, translations. Especially when you yeah. randomly start just T-posing and uh, not responding at all. Who, me? Yes, you. Uh, fair enough. We're already kind of dealing with that with the librarian. Is the librarian T-posing? No, no, yes. we just can't understand him because the people that could <laughs> understand him are gone and T-posing and not responsive at all. Fair enough. I don't know. When I walked in there, it was pretty scary. So I I'd rather, yeah, we'll uh, I say no. If we really I need also to... say no. If we really need to pay them, we can always go back to that one island and raid the people that live there. If we really, really need to pay them, we can sell chicken. <clears throat> or we could just, you know, not. Because from what you've told us, they don't like the people that live there. No, they just don't like their wives and husband. And they don't like timber and... I'll give them a reason not to like me. I don't think it's not that they don't like Timber. I think it's just that they are uh, actively afraid of Timber, as I am. I think that's pretty much true for anybody with a survival instinct. Fear oh, is a powerful nice. weapon. <clears throat> He's been nice to us so far. I'll talk to them and explain that with the language barrier and everything being considered, uh, the rest of the crew, my crew, doesn't seem like it's going to be a decent fit. Ooh, oops. Especially not if they're going to want that much money. I do believe we still are on the hunt as well. I'm ready to go yeah. when you all. The bard shrugs, uh, basically says that he thought that the price would be maybe lower or something. To be fair, he never offered 10 gold to them. He was just debating it with the other guys. And then they were like, oh, 10 gold a week sounds great for us. But yeah. <laughs> He wasn't expecting such a high price, so if you just, uh... uh... He will 100% still try to finesse that rooster, though. Try to what? Finesse the rooster. Sway. <laughs> I've I would need you to try to... Finesse said rooster. Give him a grin. Some some subtle body language. Um, Work in his face. <laughs> bark in his face? No, I said twerk. Oh, twerk. <laughs> and he doesn't actually do that. That was a joke. <laughs> um, the rooster is, is kind of subtly for lack of a better term, turned on by this. <laughs> um, but he just kind of waves his hand and is just like, get out of here. Oh, all right. He, he, he blows him a flirty kiss and uh, leaves.
Okay. Um, did you keep the gold you found, or did you return that as well? Uh, yeah, that never left the crate. The, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. Um, now a reminder, part of the deal that you guys had with the original lizard guy was that you needed to get the wheel to their ship. Oh. Are we sure this is them? Uh, that's up to you. Uh, can I just tell them, hey, the next time you go to port, which please make that soon, uh, go find this lizard guy. Because he's he's telling people that you guys are a ghost ship. Um, the peacock's body language is just kind of like, oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. Um, hey, you're the guys who wanted bioluminescence on your ship, of course. Like, obviously, in the fog, people are gonna think that that's a ghost ship. Like, I'm just saying, yeah, no, I know it looks cool. <laughs> All right. Um, it's up to you guys what you want to do. Sad conquest paladin noises. No fight right now. Duke. They're just merchants. That's yep. literally all it is. Is they're just merchants who want divorces. So with the rigging back up and with the door repaired, I'm gonna head back to our ship. Okay. Yeah, this was a whole waste of a trip. Cute Martin, just taking all the pizza crust. But we'll I mean, go no ball. one else was going to eat it. <laughs> there are two types of people in this world. Those that eat their pizza crust and those that don't. Three types. Those that eat other people's pizza crust. Oh, dear. I see you've played Night in the Woods. I actually haven't. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, you guys are probably approaching midnight or so. Moon's high in the high in the sky. So, onward then, my strange compatriots. Yeah, Timber starts uh, sailing again. Uh, does he have an estimate of how far away this uh, the tower is? Uh, the tower itself. Let me look at my thingy. Um, it's actually about the same distance as the... Uh, Hashaka Island is from where you are. I'm sorry, but I've like dozed off a couple times now. I have to call it here. Okay. I have to drop out. Uh, once the VOD goes up on YouTube, I will catch up on the uh, point that I left from. Rose. All right. Uh... Timbo will ask uh, if they want to return to that stupid place full of heretics or go to the tower. Well, I guess tower it is then. <laughs> yeah, I'd yeah might probably well. tower next. Timbo starts going towards the tower. Okay. Um, 
all we'd need to do if we went back to the town is tell the wives. And... I think it's just the one wife. Um, okay. Excuse me, sorry. Um, pull up the thing. Okay, so you are all traveling. Uh, you're kind of going southwest-ish um, as you're sailing towards the uh, this tower that's just extending high into the uh, the sky. And it seems to be on an island itself, as you kind of get closer. It becomes more apparent that it's not just like sticking out of the water, it's actually on an island. Um, it's another six hours or so, so it's starting to hit early morning by the time you guys reach um, the island. Sorry, making sure I've got the right stuff up. Does Tipo um, see anywhere to dock? Um, there's, there is a place to dock. Uh, and there's also a river that extends from the ocean into the island. Well, you know, Timber's been sailing for 12 hours. I think we should dock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a place to dock or a good place we can do so. Sure, let's go ahead. Dock and rest. Okay. Uh, you pull up. Um, this dock looks a little overgrown. Like, it's not really well maintained. Um, but you're able to get yourselves anchored up, uh, take the sails down, tie yourself to the dock, and you're all able to take a long rest. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Snore, snore, sleep, snore. So where is Timber sleeping? In the library? Oh, that's his favorite. No. I'll sleep in the oh, library. He's got the captain quarter. With the goose? Yes. That's the goose's room. Timber will pet the cobra snake, and if the cobra snake bites him, he will continue to pet the cobra snake. <laughs> yes. I know I said cobra snake instead of cobra chicken, but whatever. <laughs> I was, I was processing that. I was like, Wait, cobra that chicken, sound right? <laughs> okay. Um, so having gotten to a new island um, and completing the misleading quest that the stupid lizard guy gave you. Go to stealth. Kill this man. <laughs> no. No to uh, self. Temple wants to find out who told them about this. Luckily, he doesn't. He never met him, so he doesn't know. If you all want, we can stop here. Yeah, it um, seems like a good stopping point. Yeah. Fair we, enough. We just lost Rose. There's technically yeah. only like an hour left. Um. So you wouldn't even be able to get too far along. Um, so yeah, let's let's call it here. Um, if anybody wants to make a quick donation for a new microwave, I will give. something cool. Let me figure out what I'll give. I'll give some sort of mythic item for the party. 
How much for microwave? One hundred dollars. It's probably yep. it's actually about seventy. Uh, I was just uh, considering PayPal fees and taxes. Shipping. No shipping. We'd be going to the store itself. Okay. A magnanimous dispensation. Are you sure, Toshimi? Yeah. The microwave. So tell me, tell me what you want, Toshimi, since you're the one that made the donation. What kind of item would you like? Thank you so very much, Toshimi. You're welcome. I didn't know D D was paid to win. <laughs> <laughs> this is an emergency kind of situation because I have. Very little food that doesn't require a microwave. Can you, like, stove cook most of those? What was that? It, like, most things that are microwavable usually have, like, a stove cook option to it. That's not an option. Did we just lose Toshimi? Uh... Uh, I think so. Come back. I need to know what item you want. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Disconnected. No, he just had to go on a little run. That's all. The dog's getting into stuff in here. It what? <laughs> My dog's getting into stuff in here. <laughs> oh. So tell me, Joshua, yeah, what? What mythic item would you like? Like what cool weapon or item or potion or what? what is it that you're looking for? Yes, I know, Phoebe. I haven't been paying attention to you. I mean, we could figure that out uh, next time. That'll work. Or between now and next time, rather. Yeah, I want to make sure that you you get your fair share, since you're you donated so much money today. My goodness. Yes, yes, you did, and I hugely appreciate it. So definitely something for you there. Yeah, I want to I want to be able to spoil you. I already have a couple of the magic last magic items. You have what? The bunny hood, the... Oh. <laughs> Vivi's gift. <laughs> well, if you want something for the party, we can figure that out, too. That'll work. I mean, it could possibly you... be uh, super, you know, a, a, a pimped out ship. <laughs> <laughs> Get it all repaired want, and I'll take it. reinforced <laughs> and stuff. <clears throat> But we can decide that later. Yeah. Yeah. But thank okay. you so yeah, very much. much for that. You know what? Just, just just give me the rooster. How about that? Okay. <laughs> but you're not the one that did it. Oh. Yeah, Trano, my microwave died on me during the session. I was actually in the middle of... I, I, I had thankfully finished my food for tonight... Except I, it was some noodle stuff, and uh, I was going to heat up some my meatballs to go with it. Put the meatballs in, and it immediately was like, boom, 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 and yeah. Thankfully, with meatballs, I typically stay in the kitchen rather than. Splendid offering. Oh, thank you, Karma. Yes. Huge thank you to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get you guys extra crowns. So the new bot should be uh, actually giving you guys your crowns automatically for donations. At least that's what it says it does. <laughs> uh, S on the end. I did actually add in a... Uh, you know, it's coins, crowns, 
And something else, I believe. Toshime, it's hard to tell whether it's actually giving you your crowns with you having so many. <laughs> Next time you go to do a donation, I would love it if you would uh, check your crowns first, then do it, and then check them again. Okay. Since you're most likely to do it again the soonest. <laughs> um, Expensive. And I hugely, hugely appreciate it. I cannot tell you guys how much I, I, I just really appreciate it. Well, oh my it's god! About tree fitting. I wasn't meaning right now. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> it's gonna be about tree fitting. Yep, it works. Does it? Okay, yes, yes, I see. I was looking at the high numbers and I was like, uh, it still says 247 <laughs> at the first numbers. <laughs> oh, right. This was about 350. Yes, that was one of the donation messages. Yeah, I have a specific donation message, uh, that says, uh, it's about tree fitty whenever somebody donates exactly $3.50. That's fantastic. There. Bonus crowns for those. Thank you so much. Oh, and then we lost Stream Raiders. But anyways, I guess we'll go ahead and get this wrapped up. Thank you again for the uh, help with the microwave. I was not expecting that to die on me tonight. I'm just, like I said, glad that I stay in the kitchen because the meatballs only take about a minute in the microwave. And otherwise, well, if it were one of my other things, I would have been out here and possible fire. And yeah, that's never good. Would, would not have noticed. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining us for... Ascent to Ascend Dungeons and Dragons. Check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Twitter, Patreon, all those things there on the website, as well as down in the description below. Thank you to my patrons, donators, and subscribers. It is because of your support that I'm able to continue bringing these streams to you all. I really cannot do it without you guys. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It is one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by simply sharing the streams around. Uh, consider becoming a patron... Oh, wait, I already said that. What did I miss? I'm a little... I got a little distracted when I got even more from Toshimei. Thank you for those biddies. <laughs> Thank you all so much. To be honest, you... <laughs> Thank you all so much for hanging out and uh, supporting the channel, though. It means so much to me. But for now, I bid you all the most fundest a duke. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. I will be back in just a few minutes with some more streaming. <laughs>